Hey everyone, David Rishpan with you once again for another YouTube tutorial. We are going to look at two triangles, two concepts that have maximized my practice productivity. Let's get into it. The first triangle is adapted from Kenny Werner's Effortless Mastery. In another video that I will link to either here or here somewhere, um, I spoke about what his concept of playing effortlessly means to me. Now, this is an excerpt from Effortless Mastery that I discovered in Keyboard Magazine around the time that the book came out, and this was the biggest takeaway of that entire book for me. Kenny Werner describes it actually as a practice diamond with four corners. Now, one corner is play effortlessly, and that corner is always lit up. So I think of it as a practice triangle because there's only three things that we're, there's only three variables that can be combined. Play effortlessly is always on. Those three corners are play the entire piece, play it perfectly, play it at tempo, and you can only have two of the three or you're only focused on two of the three while you're practicing. So if you want to play the whole piece perfectly, it won't be at tempo. If you want to play things perfectly and at tempo, it may not be the whole piece. And then if you want to play the whole piece at tempo, it may not be perfect. As I said in the previous video, having these parameters that focus my practice time and that allow me to evaluate myself on objective goals has been invaluable to helping my productivity and to guiding my practice time when I haven't been able to check in with a teacher or a mentor. It also takes some of the stress and some of the pressure off what I'm supposed to be doing in my practice time. I don't have to play the entire thing perfectly at tempo in one go. I can set two of the parameters. I'm going to focus on two bars that I want to play perfectly at tempo. I'm going to focus on playing the whole thing perfectly, but not at speed. The way I apply this in my own practice routine, uh, especially when I'm learning new material, is I will take a run at the whole thing imperfectly just to get a sense of the contour and the shape and the direction of the piece and just to kind of get the broad strokes of the physicality of the piece and the musicality of the piece just to kind of get the rough sketch of what's going on and then I will go in phrase by phrase section by section and focus on the technical and musical challenges of the piece and work only on those until everything is smooth and solid but at a lower tempo. And then I will go and work on bumping up the speed to get everything up to performance tempo. This triangle of practice has made my work so much more efficient and so much more productive in the years since I've adopted it. A huge thanks to Kenny Werner. This idea, this concept has changed how I work on my own music, how I teach music to other people, and has made my practice time much more productive. The second triangle I wanna talk about is what I call the triangle of input. So if you've studied music in a conservatory setting, in a university setting, you have three different types of classes that often don't really talk to each other. You have theory and analysis, you have ear training or musical dictation, transcription, and you have your practical lessons on your instrument. In other words, we are dealing with music from three different senses. We are dealing with how it looks on the page, if it's written down, the visual part, how it looks on a staff. We're dealing with the auditory, the oral part, how it sounds, which is obviously the most important part. And then we have the physical part, which is where it is on your instrument, the physicality of executing this sound. The way I think about it now is that any piece of musical information contains all three of those elements. 
every chord, every scale, every etude, every solo that you transcribe has those three elements baked into it. How it looks, how it sounds, and how it feels on your instrument. This is particularly useful in fixing mistakes because mistakes are gonna happen. Now, if you have three senses working in tandem to alert you to a mistake, you also have three senses of how to fix it. So if I'm working on a chord progression and I hit the wrong chord, I know I hit the wrong chord because I can hear that it's the wrong chord. My hands tell me that I played the wrong keys. And if I look down at the keys or if I analyze the notes that I've played, I can see what note is wrong. And as you practice this way, as you start to link all three of these elements together for any piece of musical information, the more quickly you can fix your mistake. You have your hands, your ears, and your eyes all working together at all times to keep track of where you are in your rep, in your warm-ups, in your exercises, in whatever. And all three of those senses are working in tandem to give you feedback to tell you that you made a mistake and that this is where you should be. This also helps in learning new repertoire and learning new music because if I only have one of these pieces of information, it can fill out the other two. If I'm only given the audio, if I can only hear what's going on, if I can only perceive what's going on, to use that phrase, musical perception, once I can hear it, I also know theoretically what it is and I can write it down, I can look at it, I can create something for me to look at, and I can also visualize it and kind of feel it on my instrument. I know where it will sit on the piano, I know where that sits on my instrument. If I'm given music to read, I can read through it and look at the chords and look at the notes on the staff, and I can hear it, I can audiate it, I can hear it in my uh, inner ear, and I can pretty much visualize, maybe there's some fingering things that I need to work out, but I can pretty much figure out uh, the physicality of how to execute this passage. The beauty of having video and having so much video of our favorite artists now is that we can see the physicality and replicate the physicality, the physical motions of where these things are. Transcribing things that don't have video is really helpful, really useful, but transcribing things that have video have that other level of understanding how it was physically executed. If you listen to it, maybe you don't understand initially how the fingering should be or what position on the neck that phrase was played in, but with video, you can see the fingerings, you see the position shifts, you see how it is most efficiently delivered or at least how it is most efficiently delivered for that person who played it in the first place. Everybody's body and physiology is different, and the way we interface with our instrument is going to be different. So what works for one person, fingering-wise, position-wise, may not work for you, and that's okay, but at least having the visual reference, the physical reference of how it was done in the first place is a really great starting point to have. And again, if you can combine all three of those elements, how it looks, how it sounds, how it feels on your instrument, and understand that when you recognize C major 7, that all three of those elements are coming into play, that will make your reaction time, your response time, your ability to learn music that much quicker, that much more optimized, that much more productive, and that much more efficient. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful and useful. If you did, you know what to do. Click the like button, click the subscribe button if you're not already subscribed, including the notification bell so that you get updated every time I post a new video like this. Follow me on all the social platforms at Rishpan Music. And if you're feeling particularly generous and you are able to do so, please go over to my Patreon page where there is exclusive content and you can support the channel and keep more videos like this coming in the weeks and months ahead.
Stay safe, stay healthy, stay creative. I'll see you in the next one.